I just want to take one moment. This one's for the killer. Walter Killer Kowalski, and I think, and you had to fact check me, that's okay, I think he got that name after he ripped off one of his opponent's ears, and, and I think someone told him or yelled at him directly and said, you are a killer, and that's when he took on that name, Killer Kowalski. Uh, fact check it if you want, if not, it works for me, but he also, I know he traveled alone, I, I've listened to some of the inter- interviews early on, uh, when I started listening to more like interviews on YouTube and things like that, one of them, he was talking about being alone in his car, turning off the car radio. He would talk back to the car radio sometimes, but he also turned down a car radio and would cut promos using the killer Kowalski, that killer voice that he had and, and, and cringing up. He said he'd cringe up his hand and, and do little things like, like a mime, I guess, if you will, or mimicking, if you will. I'm sorry, not a mime, but a mimic of what he wanted to project in his upcoming promos when he became, quote, killer Kowalski. Yeah. And that's, you know, all the guys that ever, you ever really hear that got over besides a good work ethic, the one thing you hear on is they worked on their character. They mm-hmm. knew they knew who they were. They knew how to get themselves into that role to play it. Uh, DDP, Macho Man, all these guys, like, they, they could plan a whole match in their head in yeah. 15 seconds and have it all laid out. But they also knew everything their character needed to do to either, you know, get over or get heat. Um, right. Yeah, the, w- the way I heard the Killer Kowalski thing, it was a guy named Yukon Eric who had some nasty cauliflower ears. Okay. <laughs> and Kowalski gave him a knee drop and the guy's ear popped off. Oh, is that what it was? Okay. Yes. And apparently, <laughs> apparently the story goes, who knows what's apocryphal or whatever. But that was where that started to cement him as just the villain. So yeah. they, they came up with the story, or maybe it really happened, that he then later went to the hospital and laughed at the guy. First thing got by the name of Yukon Eric. I tied Yukon Eric's leg over the second rope and his toe under the bottom rope. So he's trapped there. So I climb up top to him, got to jump on him. So I freeze underneath me, untying him. I have a picture of that. He's untie, untie his leg. I jumped over the referee. As he's, Yukon Eric's coming, coming down, he can't turn away. My shin bone scraped his cheek so tight, it ripped the side of his whole ear, the coffin ripped it off the side of his head, rolled across to him like a golf ball, and blood spurting all over the place. His heart beat, boom, the blood spurted, boom. Somebody threw a towel at him, put a towel on his head, and was soaked in, in a few seconds, the towel was soaked. Whenever he pushed me back, he looked at him, what, what happened, what's happening? I said, I just tore his ear off. He did what? He looked down, picked it up off the ground, holy mackerel. That is still throbbing. That's his ear. Hugh Conrad walks over to the corner into the dressing room. The referee says, what do I do now? Raise my arm. I'm the only one left here. Oh, okay. Raise my arm as the winner. Walk to the hospital and they walk up the second steps. They look down, down the hallway. There's a room open door. There's a bunch of people in there. So that's where his, his that's Hugh Conrad's room. Looked across the room. Here's Yukon Eric sitting on the edge of the bed, feet on the floor, his head bandaged around and around and around. First thought that came to my mind was Humpty Dumpty sitting on the wall. So I started laughing. <laughs> so I threw my arms up in the air and went like that. I walked out. The next day, the Montreal Gazette, this was a Friday, Montreal Gazette, on Saturday, headlines. Vlada Kowalski visited Yukon Eric in the hospital and laughs at him. The next following Wednesday, I'm walking toward the ring, people scream horror at me. You monster, you animal, you killer, you're this, that. Hey, I like that name. From that day on, I did change my name to Killer Kowalski. Now, also, he was in a match, and I forgot who it was against, but uh, boxing great Jack Dempsey was the referee. Yeah, okay. And uh, Kowalski kicked him in the stomach and sent him to the hospital. Oh, shit. <laughs> Which <laughs> he is a killer. Oh yeah, which furthered his <laughs> reputation. But did you know I yeah. found out an interesting thing about Kowalski? What's he, that? He is the first man to pin under the giant in North America. Oh, is that right? Now yep. that is interesting. Yep. So if I nothing else, that. if nothing else makes you a killer, doing that makes you a giant killer. That's right. Well, you know, but he had a he had a great body too, a good hard work ethic body that just was hard everywhere. It looked like mm-hmm. it was just big. Looked like big cock strong body. So, and he pinned on a giant. That you know, that's <laughs> yeah, that's doing something right there. Wow. Yeah, and as how I many had, people could say that? Uh, very, it's very few. 
It's okay. it's not a whole lot. I mean, he had I lost so. when he was still wrestling in Europe. He had lost a few matches, but by the time he got to uh, North America, they wanted. To, that's why they never nobody ever wanted to put a world title on him because they're like, then somebody has to beat him, and that's right, not what right. we want. Um, I did see a match one t- or a clip from a match one time, and I wish I, I think it was one of the Moon Dogs. And Andre punches the guy, and as the guy's falling to the ground, Andre grabs him by the the top of his pants and pulls him back up before the guy hits the ground. <laughs> and so, yeah, I mean, you know, when you have an unstoppable man like that, and you give Kowalski a chance to, you know, beat him, you're putting yeah. some you're putting some weight on Kowalski. <laughs> yeah. Now, That's for sure, I could find a reference or two, but I wasn't sure. But it looks like at some point in the '60s, he legally changed his name to Killer Kowalski as well. Okay. Cool. Yeah. That's good to know. That's good to know. All right. Read the book that has the literary and wrestling worlds on fire. Pin me, pay me. Have boots will travel. By accomplished professional wrestler Bobby Blaze Smedley. The incredible story of one man's battle to overcome all odds and realize a lifelong dream. Travel with Bobby in the ring, on the road, and around the world, including inside stories from WWE, WCW, Smoky Mountain Wrestling, and more. Forward to the book written by Jim Cornette. Buy your copy of Pin Me, Pay Me, Have Boots, Will Travel on Amazon.com today.